Okay. Um, first off, if I don't make sense, I'm sorry. I only have a cup of coffee this morning. So. <laughs> uh, thank you. That was okay. I'm gonna cry. So but, you know, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. It, it, it touched me as much as yesterday when Joel's wife was uh, talking about her. That really got to me. Um, I'm so happy to be here, and I feel like I'm kind of coming full circle. We, my wife and I, have been on um, a purging journey pretty much at least a decade now, I don't know. Our parents were born during the Depression, um, were raised during rationing of World War II, so like many of you, they kept everything. Because um, you never know, you may need it. You, you will. Um, so we got to a point of you know, that, that was just our natural state, and we, you know, we had the piles. You know, there's an episode of uh, Twilight Zone, Burgess Meredith, and he, all he wanted to do was read books. And the, his, he didn't care about anything else but reading. And he gets himself locked in a safe of some sort, and there's you know, a world war, and it comes out, and everyone's gone, and all he has is his books. And he's got his books all lined up. And he's like, finally, I have time enough at last. I, this is this month. Next month, next year, ten years from now, I can read everything. And then his glasses fall off and they break. And he can't see because he has big cobalt glasses. Um, but and we felt like that, so we started uh, purging on and on and on. And my parents finally got to a point of they saw what we were doing, and they said, you know what? We don't want you to be stuck with the stuff that we have sitting in the basement from when my grandmother died in '78. And still actually there, but um, <laughs> but but they started doing that, and um, and that was a wonderful thing that I could pass on to them. And to get back to the coming full circle thing, um, two years ago, two years ago on this day, I got a phone call that my mother was turned. Okay, now she had a two-year battle of cancer. She fought it bravely. And uh, I got the call, and we go to the hospital. And uh, I spent the next week on, on the floor with her. Sorry. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> um, but going through that was, was the final armor to push forward in my life. That finding what was important, what was essential, what was not, and saying, again, we've talked about this before, saying yes, if you can't say yes unequivocally, completely, it must be no. And being here with all of you has been just a, it's a wonderful experience because I'm in a room of people who all have the same beliefs and care about each other. I mean, look at this wall, offers and needs. I didn't even know what to say. I haven't talked to many of you because I didn't want to go up and say, I, I don't know what to say. I feel pretty content. I have a beautiful wife. We have a great life. We have lots of needs and wants, but they may not be what you need or what you want. And your need may be really, really important. And I don't want to, I don't want to take the time from you or you or you because I don't know what I want. But you may need that person's time. And I don't want to come up and bother that. So if I haven't talked to many of you, it's because I don't know what I need and want right now. But I'm just really, really helpful and thankful to be with all of you this weekend. So thank you.